Birmingham, England, January 2002, a young man vanishes. Police think he's a runaway, but a psychic has a vision of a brutal murder. His head was pushed down and he had a blow to the head. He's describing this as if he's watching himself. He's also shown me that he's been buried under water. Can she convince the cops the killer is on the loose and put him behind bars? Or will the mystery surrounding this young man's disappearance remain unsolved forever? It was really horrific. It was frightening. Birmingham, a bustling city in the heart of England and a center of business and finance. But like any major city, Birmingham has its problems. Over 23,000 violent crimes were committed last year. Detective Daly is a cop whose job it is to catch the culprits. But when good old police methods fail to find missing local man Mark Green, it's to this woman, Diane Lazarus, that she turns. Diane Lazarus is a psychic, and today she's in Birmingham to help Detective Daly solve the riddle of Mark's disappearance. The story starts here in January 2002. 31-year-old Mark Green is out with a friend in the city centre. When he doesn't return home, his parents begin to worry. They called the police um, quite soon after um, the concerns became quite concrete, uh, and they reported Mark as a missing person. Detective Marcella Daly is placed in charge of the missing person inquiry. Mark was a 31-year-old um, man that came from the Stetchard area of Birmingham. He was a lecturer at a local college in art and design. He had um, a great bunch of friends, um, two very loving parents and, uh, and a very good supportive family setter. Mark's disappearance sends shockwaves through Birmingham's gay community. No one can understand why he would go missing or where he would go. Detective Daly's first task is to interview Mark's friend. Mark's friend wasn't treated as a, a suspect as such, however, he was a vital person within this missing person investigation, and, and he held vital information, uh, and he was incredibly supportive towards the investigation. He tells officers what happened on the night in question. The night that Mark disappeared, he went out with some friends, um, decided to, um, that he was going to go on to another club, and his friend took the bus home. Mark was last seen alive on the 17th of January um, outside, actually leaving the nightclub called Kudos uh, in Birmingham city centre. Um, he was seen um, leaving through the main doors and then he was later seen um, just outside um, by CCTV. There are tens of thousands of closed circuit television or CCTV cameras in Birmingham, but unfortunately Mark is only seen by one. Police make appeals on local radio for information about Mark's disappearance. You're listening to Birmingham City News. It's Monday, the 28th of January. West Midlands Police are launching an appeal for information relating to the disappearance of 31-year-old college lecturer Mark Green. Mark was last seen in the city centre on Thursday evening. There is concern for his safety and police... But no new information comes forward. In desperation, Detective Daly hits the streets and begins interviewing hundreds of potential witnesses. Hi. Can I just let you have a look at that place? It's a, a missing person inquiry. This is a missing person inquiry. This is a yeah, missing person inquiry. A missing person inquiry. Have you seen this person at all? No, I haven't. Have you seen this person at all? Uh, not at all. Can I just give you that? No. OK, thank, thank you. you. There was obviously contact with um, a range of friends and also friends that perhaps he had um, lost contact with. There was also contact with other areas that he'd been to in his, in his life, whether it be university or friends that he'd visited. There was nobody that came to light that would have any need or intention to hurt Mark in any way. The police are baffled by the case. It seems Mark just disappeared into thin air. For Mark's parents, waiting for news of their son is heartbreaking. Anne and Doug Green throughout this investigation were incredibly brave um, and have my utmost um, respect. Um, it's very difficult um, to actually wake up every day knowing that your son's, your son's not there and nobody can find him and nobody can explain whilst he's not there. 
It's now been two months since Mark went missing. Over 150 miles away in Wales, psychic Diane Lazarus is holding a private seance for a woman called Myron Green. She wants to contact her daughter who died the previous year. The reason is taped for you, just in case this message is passed on for other people. I not only talk about you, I talk about your family members as well. Diane's seances are incredibly detailed. To help her clients remember what is said, she records everything to tape. I've got a young lady coming through called Sean, and I feel that she passed over in an accident. She's saying that she loves you. She's now bringing in a gentleman called Mark. She's putting her arm right around him and bringing him forward. And she's saying that he's definitely passed over. Diane thinks that the man is Mark Green. She didn't know that Mark is Myron's nephew or that the police think he's a missing person. Was he, in fact, dead? I hadn't heard anything about uh, Mark Green at all, in all honesty. You know, the first I heard of Mark was literally through doing that reading. Yes, this is definitely a gentleman called Mark. But that's my nephew and he's, he's only missing. He's not dead. I remember Myra was literally shaking her head saying, no, you can't have him. So I went in to describe Mark. He's got brown hair. He's got a lovely smile. He's saying he likes art. He's also shown me steps towards a college. So I feel he worked in a college. He's shown me he used to carry a rucksack. He was always in a rush. Well, that's my nephew. He's a lecturer, but he's not dead. He's definitely passed over in the spirit world. He's quite distressed because he's saying... That Diane's description is so accurate, Myron has no choice but to believe. She's very upset, but worse is to come. Mark is telling me that he's not missing. He has not walked away from his parents. He's quite distressed because he's saying that he's been murdered. <gasps> I don't think for one minute that she expected this to happen. Uh, simply because she thought she was coming for a reading, she might have a message from her daughter but she was really taken back by the fact that I had Mark in front of me. Diane describes what she believes happened to Mark on the night he disappeared. He's saying that he went to a nightclub and as he walked from there, he was attacked. He's saying that he had this nasty blow, something really heavy hit him at the back of his head. He's saying that he's buried underwater. And then went on to say that it was a lady that's going to help solve a case. It was a lady that was short hair, nice eyes. He also mentioned there was going to be a television appearance. And after, and after that, that, the crime will all be solved. But is Diane right? Has Mark been killed and buried underwater? Were the police wrong in thinking he is just missing? Maya was really taken back. She just, I remember seeing her slumped in the chair. Just couldn't believe what I just told her. And she said she was shaken with this tape in her hand, saying, I, I know what I'm going to do with this tape. I'm going to pass this on and get it to the police. The next day, Myron sends the tape recording of Diane's seance to the police. It lands on Detective Daly's desk. But will it convince her that Mark is not a missing person? Mark is telling me that he's not missing. He's been murdered. Detective Marcella Daly is in charge of the missing person investigation. I think on hearing the tape, my feelings were a little bit mixed at first. It's a um, very difficult thing to, to kind of listen to. Um, but I thought it was important to remain open-minded. He's saying he's got jeans on. He had a denim jacket on at the time that he was murdered. She came up with information with regards to location. Um, interesting um, information he's connected really to Mark's um, parents. Policy. But he's she also came up with information with regards to me, um, which was quite surreal, really. There's a police officer, a lady. She's got short hair, lovely eyes. And she described me as a key figure in the investigation. On the tape, Diane can be heard describing Mark's appearance, his movements that fateful night. She tells of a blow to the back of the head and a burial underwater. There were some elements that um, weren't what perhaps you would call guessable. You know, um, there, there was some information, some factual information with regards to this inquiry that we purposely kept out of the media. Um, and Diane had touched on a number of these points. Detective Daly asks Mark's parents permission to contact Diane. Approaching Alan Don about the information on the tape was um, 
a little bit difficult, but they felt like any information that was coming through on Mark that it really needed to be looked at. I had a phone call then from the West Midlands Police, Marcella Daly, and she was asking me, how do you know about Mark's murder? Um, how do you know all these details? There's no way you could know all these details. It was, um, she was very much taken back as well, and I felt I was being really questioned, big time. So I just answered as best as I could and tried to explain that I'm not a crackpot. Um, Mark is in the spirit world, and he's given me the information. Got very good vibes from, from speaking to her, and um, she seemed genuine uh, and very supportive to what she wants to help. And she agreed to come down to Birmingham to meet me. I was really nervous when I was invited up, um, but pleased as well, because I felt I'm going to get closer to this, I'm going to help Mark to hopefully find his body and, and deal with it. The involvement of a psychic medium was completely new to me, but she had vital information with regards to Mark's disappearance. Um, that, that really... Um, I couldn't afford to ignore. Detective Daly decides to team up with psychic Diane Lazarus. She takes her to the place where Mark was last seen alive. Can she make a psychic connection with Mark and help convince Detective Daly that he has been murdered? She was felt a very strong feeling to walk in a particular direction, um, and that direction um, was actually supported by CCTV footage of Mark. And in fact, it was actually the last footage that I had of Mark. The CCTV here, just that, that one there. We've actually got a picture still of Mark, just standing here actually chatting to somebody. We don't know who that person is and they haven't come forward. I could literally see Mark ahead of me and he's saying, walk this way. Diane believes that Mark is guiding her and Detective Daly along the route he took the night he disappeared. To hit. Mark so you literally showed me in great detail which way to walk. Just want to go straight down here. Okay. We said take a left here, take a right here. Because to me, he's coming through really distressed at this point. And he keeps taking me as if he wants to sort of drag the both of us down this area all the time. Quite clearly, I had an understanding of where Mark had gone. Um, and Diane, uh, without having that information, um, walked that route. Um, and I followed her and, and listened intensely to what she had to say. I don't feel he was alone. Somebody else was with him. And this guy that I feel is certainly not a friend that's with him at this point. It's as if he was staring Mark out. I kept looking at him, staring at him. It's as if he wanted me to see into his eyes. And I felt as if I was drawn into this guy's eyes. Mm. And he said, can you see what I've seen? Walking with Diana, she was um, talking about how Mark was feeling, providing this information. Um, it was quite unusual, certainly the, the trained detective in me that was very much used to dealing with factual information was still remaining very open-minded. I didn't disbelieve her. I was pleased by Marcella because she, she questioned a few times, but she took in all the information that I gave her, uh, which is brilliant, and she accepted what I was saying. Um, she didn't try and sway me anyway. She, she said, do you think he was here? How do you think he looked? Which way did you describe him? You know, all the right questions she should have been asking, really. After five hours walking, Diane Lazarus and Detective Daly arrive at this housing estate in Birmingham's Highgate district. This is definitely it, definitely. And I remember actually getting to some flats and he kept saying, Diane, here, this is the place. The psychic connection is now stronger than ever. Mark begins to reveal the full horror of what happened to him that night. He was really hitting him and beating him up. When Mark was pushed down and kept being pushed down, he had a blow here, right there, the back of his head. The impression he keeps giving me is that his head was put down. But police have no information to suggest Mark would ever come to this area of Birmingham. He didn't have any friends here, and it's miles from his home. It was really horrific, it was frightening. Um, when I was actually standing there I was, and hearing this information, it was unbelievable. I was looking in, in thinking, you know, where are you, Mark? He kept saying, you're not going to find me here, you're close, you're not going to find me here. But I'd been taken away, and I could see black bags being laid out. It was terrifying. For me, even, I was in a right mess, and I felt awful. And I thought, these people are going to think I am nuts to say these things to them now. But the walk has a dramatic effect on Detective Daly. 
Her growing suspicion that something sinister had happened to Mark is now confirmed. She decides to upgrade the missing person case to a murder case. Diane Lazarus has done her job. It's been several months since Mark Green was first reported missing from home in Birmingham, England. With the help of psychic Diane Lazarus, police are now treating his disappearance as murder. Because of some supportive information on the tape, um, as well as a, you know, a very intense investigation, um, the decision was made quite quickly to upgrade the investigation to a murder investigation. It's incredible, but a tape recording of a seance is being used by police to catch a killer. Using information provided by Diane Lazarus, police begin to search whole new areas of Birmingham. Diane provided particular information with regards to locations and areas and um, materials that she felt were important. And that information formed part of my searching um, of areas. It's an agonizing time for Mark's parents. The waiting for Mark's parents was just completely devastating. Um, not only Mark's parents, but obviously key family members um, and also uh, Mark's um, partner at the time. Um, and there is just no way of actually describing how completely devastated um, they were as, as every second tip by, really. But despite their best efforts, the police find no evidence of Mark. It was um, very frustrating for me as, as the um, an officer, the main officer in the investigation, not to, to find Mark when I felt so committed to finding Mark. It isn't just Detective Daly who's growing frustrated. The length of time that Mark was sort of waiting for this case to be resolved, it was actually frustrating for Mark. Um, but in that time, I actually did his mum a reading um, and his dad. And Mark actually told me that there'd be a television programme. And after that television programme, the whole thing would be actually solved. This is the second time psychic Diane Lazarus has said a TV show will lead to the crime being solved. The first time was during the seance over five months ago. When Diane spoke on the tape, she mentioned um, the use of media, a wide range of media, but also that would be attending a TV show. Incredibly, in May 2002, Detective Daly is called and asked to take part in a talk show. It's going to be a television program. With and Diane's words ringing in their ears, she agrees to take part. I certainly felt with, with regards to Mark Green that we really could not afford just to ignore it. Mm. Um, I felt I had to justify to uh, the inquiry and I felt I had to do it for the parents. And Marcella rang me and said um, there is going to be a television programme and I was really taken back. I remember watching it and thinking it's not going to be long now. Um, a very unusual step. During the programme, Detective Daly is criticised for using a psychic in the investigation. Are you this was a real help. It enhanced the investigation. Yeah, I noticed you used a very kind of careful word there, enhanced. <laughs> it was quite critical of the approach that I had personally taken with the use of clairvoyance mediums. Um, what I stress and, and what's important for any family that's considering this, that there are lots of people out there that will take advantage, quite clearly, um, but there are still people out there that are have it, talent and do want to actually help people when they're in such a vulnerable state to, to find missing loved ones. The broadcast comes as a shock to one man in particular. Scared that the police are closing in, he decides to save himself and step forward with information about Mark's disappearance. A person called James came forward and basically provided information to say that um, his brother was responsible for the murder of Mark. and that um, he was responsible for helping his brother uh, dispose of Mark's body. I was pleased that um, this gentleman had walked into the police station and obviously said that he'd been involved in committing the crime um, because it's exactly what I'd said. I said there was going to be a television programme and from that moment on, I knew somebody was actually going to own up to it, so to speak. Incredibly, Diane was right. A television show has brought a killer to the surface. But what did happen to Mark on the night he disappeared? And where is he now? James's brother, Robert McMahon, is a neo-Nazi with a history of violent crime. Police arrest and charge him with the murder of Mark Green. But despite intense questioning, Robert refuses to confess to the killing. But James does talk. 
He tells police that Robert killed Mark on the night of January 17th in his flat in the Highgate district of Birmingham, the exact location Diane led Detective Daly to months earlier. I remember Marcella giving me a call up and saying that um, the place where I'd taken her was actually a spit away from where Mark had actually been murdered. So it was well worth going up to Birmingham and taking that walk. Before this case, Diane Lazarus had no connection to Birmingham. There is no way she could have known either the area or Robert McMahon. So how did she come so close to the murder scene? Weeks before, months before, I was standing in the spot thinking, I can't be in the right place, no way. And yet, um, that information was brilliant. Sometime after the murder, Robert McMahon takes Mark's body by taxi to his brother James's house in Coventry, 50 miles away. With James' help, they bury him under a pond in the back garden, just as Diane had seen in her horrific vision months earlier. When I found out that Mark's body had been buried under water feature, it was just unbelievable. It just proves that Mark's detail was so phenomenal, really. On June 7, 2003, a forensic archaeologist is brought in to excavate the site. As each layer of soil is carefully removed and analyzed, a body is discovered. Twelve hours later, human remains are exhumed. After forensic tests are complete, the body is identified as Mark Green and the cause of death is finally revealed. When Diane described how Mark had been murdered um, and when Mark's body had been found and, and forensic information came to light, it was um, quite factual that Mark had um, been killed to blow the back of the head. When I found out that Mark had died from a blow to the head, it was confirmation for me that Mark was giving me the accurate information at all times. How did Diane Lazarus know where Mark was killed, the cause of death, a blow to his head, and that he was buried underwater? The information she gave to police is all well documented and far too accurate to be guesswork. Diane has only one explanation. Mark told her. I really feel I've got a duty to the spirit world because um, I feel I'm employed by them, so to speak. So when I'm given information, I, tr I really try and act on it straight away. At their trial, it takes just one hour for a jury to find both McMahon brothers guilty. Robert was sentenced to life for the murder of Mark Green, uh, and his brother James was sentenced to two years for helping dispose of the body of Mark Green. I think Mark's parents had basically been to hell and back uh, with Mark's disappearance and, and murder. I think the, you know, the, the case, when it came to an end and when the two were found guilty and sentenced, was a relief to both Anne and Don. But, again, it, it just really emphasised the great sadness and the great loss in their life. But why did Robert kill Mark? Was it because he was seen leaving a well-known gay bar? Was this a homophobic attack? Or was he just in the wrong place at the wrong time? If this was just a random act of violence, would police have solved this case without Diane Lazarus' information? One thing is certain, Diane's prediction that a TV show would lead to the crime being solved did encourage Mark's normally reticent parents to appear on TV with Marcella Daly. Without that show, James McMahon may never have come forward and given evidence against his brother, Robert. I think Diane was helpful in solving this case. Um, she certainly enhanced the inquiry um, and provided information that um, led to an, a number of lines of inquiries and um, obviously with the end result of finding the people that are responsible for Mark's murder. To this day, Diane says that Mark still appears to her. She feels he is one of her most trusted spirit guides. Um, he still comes through, I still have conversations and he's fantastic actually.